The ocean is the mother of all life on Earth. It's the life support system of the planet, containing up to 80% of the Earth's living organisms. We often think of the huge rainforests as being the lungs of our planet, but it's actually the oceans. Marine plants supply around 70% of the world's oxygen. The ocean, along with the ice sheets, act as global air conditioners, transferring heat from the equator to the poles, regulating our climate and weather patterns. With less than 5% of the oceans having been explored, there is so much we don't understand about them. We need to respect our oceans and protect them as if our very lives depend on it. Because they do. I'm from Belfast, Northern Ireland. When I was growing up, we were going through kind of a war zone at the time. My aunt sister won the Nobel Peace Prize and my father was one of the heads of the civil rights movement. So it was very natural for me to become an activist. I started working in advertising and I was quite disillusioned with my work. Often I'd be working on big brands that I just don't agree with their principles. After some time I went traveling. Ended up in India learning yoga and meditation. But it was there that I kind of discovered that it's not advertising's fault. Advertising really is just consumer behavior psychology and we can use that to do good. So I decided to get back in the advertising, but to start to more focus on social and environmental issues. Where a company's more focused on doing good, doing business, you're actually helping the environment, you're helping a cause, you're giving back. That kind of philosophy is what we're trying to push as MHML. This new series, Save the Beyond 2020, what we wanted to do is like connect all the oceans of the planet. We've picked some of the best diving spots from all over the earth. We want to just show people how beautiful they are. And, and I really believe that people just see how incredible they are. They'll realize just what a treasure they are and how we need to protect these for ourselves and for future generations. So. Wow, where are you? Great background. Huh? Tell us a little bit about how you got to this area. Sure. So I was born in Melbourne, Victoria, which is the southern part of Australia. For me, the Great Barrier Reef was always the end goal. I just fell in love with the ocean, fell in love with the idea that there was a whole nother world under the waves. So live and work on the Great Barrier Reef and feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world. I liken a coral reef ecosystem to a game of Jenga. They're all interconnected. With every coral bleaching event, what we're losing is the most vulnerable corals and reefs. So the Great Barrier Reef Legacy has launched a project called the Living Coral Biobank Project. And we're aiming to collect all living species of corals on the planet and keep them in a special holding facility here in Australia. And the reason for doing that is, you know, we can maintain a living genetic stock of corals and their symbiotic algae and bacteria. We're taking advantage of corals' natural ability to kind of live forever. They don't have programmed cell death and they're trying to look at how to restore and recover big sections of coral reefs. In the background, we collect the biodiversity of corals for long term, uh, so we can rebuild reefs if coral species go missing. But we are looking at local restoration efforts. We're installing an artificial reef system locally here off Port Douglas um, that looks at helping the natural system recover quicker from bleaching impacts. We need to make sure coral reefs survive. It's not too late. We do have an opportunity right now to do something, but we need to take it. So when I saw the Great Barrier Reef on the watch dial, Dean came straight to mind. Last year on the boat, Dean came along as our underwater cameraman. I was really surprised to hear about his PhD in reef management and his environmental projects he's working on. So Ben has a unique story of a man who risks everything to explore the outer edges of our ocean. A world record holder, deep sea diver, whose mission is to bring these unexplored areas to the world. Still, every day, if I jump in the water, in the waters around Phuket, I still feel this 
thrill that I still had the first day. The diving around Phuket is easily accessible. The waters are nice and blue. The fish life is very good. The corals are in very good shape. For me, the place where I already spent 20 years of my life, it goes really fast. Dropping down, as you will know, it will get colder. The colors fade. In the end, you end up in a, a moon-like landscape, black and white. Everything seems to slow down. It's like a moon twilight zone, almost. Actually, citizens, they had the 200 meter mark on them, and they go actually well below 200 meters. It was always a challenge to find the equipment that would be supported to these dips. Sadly enough, you come to the bottom and you will always see the remains of humans, plastic bottles, but still having that interaction with the fish life, and that still is an amazing feeling. Matthias helped discover many of these regions' incredible world-famous dive sites, but more importantly, his life mission is to protect these natural treasures with a focus on overfishing that is devastating our oceans. This is really vital work that he's doing. Hello, Matthias. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Rick, here from the Galapagos. Let's get stuck into just about a little bit of background on how you ended up in Galapagos. Roger. I came to the Galapagos the first time 32 years ago. I was lucky to start to work in this living laboratory. Galapagos has surprises everywhere. We have the marine iguana, only iguanas that are diving down sometimes to 60 feet. We really have a lot of cleaning stations here. So one of the most famous are the cleaning station of the hammerhead sharks. What is interesting to mention that a lot of female hammerhead sharks are coming in because they are having more problems with the skin because of the mating activity. The male bites into the neck of the females. The Equatorian government had invested a lot of time and resources to try to protect the national park. But we have the industrial fishery. This is a very lucrative business and we have our marine reserves. So we have this constant threat of these big industrial fishing boats. Now with the COVID pandemic, we don't have the resources right now to control the marine reserves. So we are afraid right now. Working on Save the Beyond has been a dream job for me. What we wanted to do for this one is to look at the real heroes, working tirelessly behind the scenes to really help the environment to protect these natural assets. We traveled all around the world last year. We went to the Indonesian seas and we went out with the amazing marine biologist, Abam Sianapar. We were diving into this deep ocean and after a while these huge mantas came flying overhead and some of these guys were up to five meters in width. We went to the Great Barrier Reef where we met Nathan Cook who is a, a reef restoration expert. What struck me most was how devastated the Great Barrier Reef has become. We literally couldn't find a big patch that wasn't impacted by coral bleaching. Also, if we met Charlie Vernon, he discovered and named up to 20% of all the known corals in the world. His love and his passion for coral is just, it's so inspiring and Greg Asner. He has made an aeroplane that's kitted out with lasers and all sorts of technology. And he can literally film over a rainforest and map it in 3D real time. Last but not least, we met Eric Larson. Eric brought us up to the top of a mountain in Colorado and gave us some intensive polar training. We were trying to film at minus 20 degrees, snow up to our knees, and Eric just glides through it effortlessly. And to cap it all off, we went to Antarctica. While we were in Antarctica, there was over 20 degrees, the hottest temperature ever recorded. The lands and the continents are all separate, but the ocean just brings everything together. Through my filmmaking, I really want to make those connections again, to help people realize just how reliant we are on nature.